Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to look into server-side rendering. So here we have a custom case where we have a next application up and running. We're on the home page and here we are not utilizing any server-side rendering whatsoever. So we're essentially just fetching the data when the component or when the page mount us. So the idea right here is to essentially just add server-side rendering to display how it will look like and how it would work. So given you have worked with React before, this is probably the way you would do it. If it would be a very basic case, if you would have state management, you would handle it there. But when it comes to Next.js and server-side rendering, you need to rethink a bit on how the data is being passed. So when we reload the page, we want the data to be in the actual DOM. So now, uh, if we, for instance, check here, we have Brewing company, company, you should be able to search for it if it actually appears within the DOM. And this would, in, in that case, then uh, lay a foundation for SEO and things like that. So in order to add server-side rendering to the, to the home page, when we fetch the data, it's quite simple, actually. So in the bottom of your um, page, I would recommend adding get server-side props. And you will pass in the context, which in this case will be something we don't really need. And and I have, as you can see here, I have uh, Google, uh, sorry, GitHub Copilot, so to, it will give me the code automatically. So what it does is essentially it fetches the data similar to what we had up here. You can remove the code here real quick. And what it does is that it will extract the data here with JSON and it would send in. So whatever you pass in from props here will in that case be passed on to the component we are on right now so here we would place the data we're fetching here we're saying get service side props this is what we want to be fetched when we load before we load the page so if you have been working with server side languages like php you would know that whatever you insert within the php would appear in the actual dom on load so if you would preview the source you would see that the content would be within the html all right so we are we're essentially making a query here it's async so we do our wait so we have the response and then we extract it here and we pass in the props so when when we pass in the props as data it will become available in the home pro so we could go ahead and say home props data as for now we're not adding any types whatsoever so in this case we could say data from and we'll distract it from this interface so if i would uh, add something else it would just give us an error we don't need the context right now we can we could console log the the context to see what would happen but to save now it should have the exact same behavior that we had before so given uh, everything works as as wanted it should in fact give us the data and now we have a couple of issues here we can just log here to see what what happens I'm guessing that the data is not being fetched really in the in the exact same way it was. So if you just log and see what what the actual uh, response would be. So let's reload the page. Uh, we only had to reload the page for it to actually start reloading with server side rendering. So as you can see here, it's printing into the console here instead of the console within the browser. This is because it's server side rendered. It, it happens before the content on the screen really loads, which means that it, you can preview it in the terminal that you're executing or you're running the, the next application with. So in this case, we moved all of this code from the use effect. We moved it to actually using it in before uh, and we pass it into the actual component in this way. All right, so pretty straightforward, right? You could add multiple properties. You could add whatever you want. And as I mentioned, we're going to look into the context. So what, what is really a part of this context? So just to get a grasp on it, when you use server-side rendering, you have the query. So this would be the query URL. So uh, if you would add something to the URL right now, we'd add uh, test true. Let's see what happens. You would see that test true would appear within the query. So for service side props, it would be able to recognize the a couple of things from, from what we have. So uh, resolved URL, query, it would be locales that we're using. So there's a, a couple of different things that it would uh, understand or recognize in this case. 
So this is one way of actually using server-side rendering and one amazing feature that we have in, in Next.js. So in order for us to really confirm that we have server-side rendering, what you can do is just copy the name here. Or copy really anything you have in your DOM right now. You would copy it, you would go to the source to check for, for the actual code. So searching from it, we can see that the, the titles are occurring within the uh, view source, which means that they are being rendered when the page is being, uh, before the page is being visible to the user, which means that as for SEO purposes, this will be really trivial. Thank you for watching, guys. All of the best. Bye.